Hello, and welcome to another episode. It has been a while, but I've been um, working on some projects and stuff, and yeah, I'm hoping to make more videos soon, and um, you know, get the ball rolling again. But in the meantime, I have this original Nintendo here. This is coming to me from, what I am supposed to say, is uh, Chad from the Goldbergs. Um, I guess there um, the issues with this. Uh, I believe there was mention of the colors being off or the games not playing quite right. Um, let me look that up real quick and tell you what the deal is with that. Okay, uh, Chad here reads, Hey Brad, it takes many tries to get the games to work, and when they do, the color is messed up. It's not black and white, but not full true colors the way they should be. Some um, sportiness too, probably spottiness. I'm, I'm guessing white specks or blocks in different parts of the screen. So let's try to get this thing to recognize any games, and we'll go through and probably give it a full cleaning and all that fun stuff. So let's get into it, shall we? Okay, so we're gonna try to get um, a game or two to work on this thing. The inside really looks dirty. Um, the cartridge tray itself is pretty icky. So let's try to toss in uh, ye old monster party. Let's see if we can get anything on screen here. the classic flashing light. Yeah, I think this just needs a serious cleaning to be honest with you. All my games are super clean. gray screen, but it's not resetting. Alright, so yeah, let's pull this guy apart and give it a cleaning and go from there. I'll walk you through the process. I know you probably have seen this before, but let's go and do that anyway, right? Right. Okay, so here you go, kids. Um, I'm loving the stickers on this thing. I know it's super yellowed and dirty, but um, I used to have like this set as a kid. These Super Mario Brothers stickers right here. And as soon as I opened the package, I was super excited. Anyway, side note, let's uh, get into this thing, remove some screws and do some cleaning. Alright, so there it is. It looks pretty dirty. As you can see, there's a lot of like a dust cum accumulation there. And it looks like we might have some kind of uh, corrosion happening in this area. So let's just take off the shielding and everything else. So here's the inside, it's, uh, you can see it's a little dirty on the outside of course, but inside we have, you know, like, bug debris. Lots of like fuzzballs and stuff that we'll, we'll clean out, see the tumbleweed in there. And then we have, in the corner, I don't know, I see a bunch of legs kind of stuffed in there.
Those guys have no idea what that is, but let's find out! Not that the case is a really big deal, but we want to clean all this out so it doesn't get into the other parts when we finally reassemble. Okay, so I gave this a bit of a clean under some water. You know, I've been drying it off. So just make sure you take off this bottom cap because water definitely is going to get in here when you run this under the sink. So I'm just kind of keeping it dry, getting all the schmutz out of there. You know, get all the hair and stuff out. Just give it a rinse. And then uh, we'll let this dry while we clean the actual system. The removal of this tray is pretty simple. Once you have your screws out, this uh, section kind of pulls forward. Like that. We're going to give this a, a wash under the faucet as well. And then our plate on the bottom is kind of held in with these little bent out pieces of aluminum. It, it'll come up. It's fairly easy. And we'll dust all these par parts off. At this point when the board's naked I'd like to give it a, you know, a quick look just to make sure there are no components that are visibly uh, burnt out or have been affected by heat or if there's any strange water damage or rusting. It all looks fairly nice. So what I'll do is um, this corrosion in here I'll, I'll take care of. I'll clean this all up with some alcohol on a let's say toothbrush. So um, let's get the 72 pin connector off of here and take a look at those connections. Now that this is off, you know, you can really turn it around and look at the insides. I don't see any bent pins in there. Everything looks pretty good. So what I'll use on this is, um, we can either use the credit card method or we can use one of those um, actual system doctors. Now I'm not, I'm not talking about a one-up card or any of the new fangled stuff. I'm kicking it old school with Doc's cleaning cartridge. But yeah, let's get this cleaned up first, shall we? Okay, let's wipe off all the dust. Just lightly. The reason um, it's easier to clean with a toothbrush is, you know, you're, if you're using a cloth, you're gonna... all these connections, all these solder, solder points have little uh, legs that come through the board and they're sharp. And uh, when you rub your cloth through it kind of grips like Velcro. So get yourself a toothbrush, get yourself a little uh, medicine measurement cup, at least that's what I'm using. And I'm using to clean Using a denatured alcohol. Clean fuel. I'm pouring some into my measurement cup here. Always close this stuff when you're done with it. It evaporates fast. Then I'll just take my toothbrush and soak it in there like that knock off the extra and we're looking at this section here we're just gonna go a little crazy and we'll be able to see this start to shine up and we'll get rid of all that dirt and go ahead and go right over this edge connector too These connectors, these edge connectors for the 72 pin connector, those are usually pretty, pretty clean unless there's water damage. Does those slide on, you know, once and then you don't move it any more than that? It just kind of lives there.
Yeah, so it looks like we got a lot of that extra debris off. And we'll just go around all the little connectors because it's not going to hurt any to clean these up. We'll get a better signal and maybe that will take care of some of your, your fuzz that you're seeing on screen. Any like noise in the picture or speckles, which is noise. I'm going to do the other side, just on the um, major stuff that's open. Uh, nothing looks bad on this side, everything looks really nice. So I'm just basically doing a wet dusting. And be gentle too, because you don't want to be bending over these components. You know, the resistors and capacitors, they, they're on legs and these can easily be bent. And we don't want to do that. You bend them too many times, they break off, and then you have to replace the resistor or capacitor that, or capacitor that you messed up. So as for the main board, I'm pretty happy with this thing. It looks pretty nice after we've gone and cleaned up all the dust and all that. Is our 72 pin connector here. This bottom one's gonna probably be perfect, but we'll clean it anyway. This is the edge here that connects to the main board, the one that sticks out further is your cartridge port. Okay, so this is the eliminator for the Nintendo system. It's a Naki product. Naki? Naki? Naki. Anywho, basically it's a cartridge and instead of a game inside you have a piece of what is most likely plastic and it's wrapped with a type of cleaning pad. So you take a Q-tip and you wet it with alcohol and you and you pretty much soak the cleaning cartridge that's inside here. And you get that nice and wet with alcohol and then you just take your edge connector and put it in there. And then work it back and forth and in and out like that. So you go in, you come out, we'll shake it back and forth like this. Just doing the rocking motion. And you want to do it at several different angles like here. This angle here is loading. This is in gameplay when you push it down some when it's more of a 90 degree angle. So I like to kind of keep it at a 90 and do that back and forth motion with the cleaning cartridge. And after I do that a bunch, I go and we'll take our Q-tip. It's fairly clean. We're going to wet it and then we're going to clean. Look how nasty that edge is on that cleaning cartridge. Then we'll clean up that edge with our Q-tip, you know, remove all that gunk. And check it out. Pretty wild. That's just one side. And we'll clean the bottom of it. So these cleaning cartridges work great if you can find one. If you cannot find one, my suggestion is using a credit card and wrap that credit card with a piece of like mic microfiber cloth and do the same thing here. So I don't know if I have a microfiber cloth, but I'll show you the gist of it. Okay, I do. So, yep. Regular microfiber cloth. This one's kind of thick and it feels nice and meaty. And you can crack yourself open my subway card. So what you do is you go ahead and you um, flap this over. 
your credit card and you cut your cloth to match it. So you fold it over, find the edge of the of the card and you cut it fairly close to the to the card spot. And then with this wrapped over the edge, say like this, you can then hold it together, wet the edge with your alcohol, and put it in your cartridge slot, and work that in and out. Okay, now that we have this somewhat back together, let's see what other symptoms it produces, if any. So we'll just toss in Dragon Power, or actually we'll do Monster Party first, and then we'll do Dragon Power. So Monster Party, let's pop in there and turn it on. Looks like it's coming on the first time. That's nice and quick. Gotta take it out, put it back in. I'm just kind of slamming, slamming it in there loosely just to see if it has a really good connection. It seems like it's fine. I don't have to worry about how it's going in there at all. So let's take a look at, see if I can just toss in Dragon Power and have it work first time. Nope, that didn't work. Maybe you're just a reset. Put it back in. That seems to work okay. Do that a couple times with Dragon Power. Let's kind of pop it in there with no worries. That's a little fuzzy. The speckles is probably what he was talking about, if you can see that. Yeah, it's coming up. So if we're getting a good cartridge insert, like, 80% of the time, I'm going to be pretty happy with that. Let's just see if uh, the game plays okay. Oh, there's some messed up stuff. So the coloring here is way off. It's supposed to be uh, white, I think. And we have some weird blocks in the graphics. Yeah, this is the uh, thing he was saying about the colors being off. So we got one thing down. We have the games loading fairly quickly. And I guess the only thing we need to do now is figure out why the graphics are, are off like they are. Well, let's try it a second time. Yeah, that looks weird. Let me, um, let's switch back to Dragon Power. I might grab a couple other cartridges. Oh, we have black blocks where the, where the spaces should be in the text. Yeah, and the, um, the level graphics are off too, like in here, in here. All these off colors are not supposed to be there. Just turn the volume down so I don't get busted. Yeah, it seems to play just fine. I wonder why the graphics are a little icky sticky. So yeah, the colors are off, so I guess I'm going to have to open it up and do some poking around to see what the heck's going on with that. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to try to get rid of those uh, colored squares and the graphic glitches is I'm going to replace the 72 pin connector because who doesn't have a spare one? Okay guys, so I just tried a different 72 pin connector. This was an extra I had lying around. And the same results. We still have the um, black spaces in Dragon Power, and the graphic glitches are still there in, in Monster Party. So, why is this happening? It could be the picture processing unit, uh, which 
is this guy here, the PPU. Um, it could be bad capacitors. Okay, so just for a test, I took my original Nintendo that I know works, and um, I put Dragon Power in, and the title screen is actually red. The, the title Dragon Power is red. Um, it's white and green in our current system, so I don't know what to check. I guess we'll poke around and see what happens. Okay, so I'm thinking the reason for our garbled graphics is the um, PPU, the picture processing unit, and that um, controls the character and graphic information for, for the games. Either this is bad or there's something wrong with maybe the, the solder joints here. I looked at them with my little loop lens, they seem fine, but before trying to remove this and trying to find a you know, a spare PPU that works, either buying it off of eBay or pulling it from one of my consoles, which I'd rather not do because it, my consoles work fine, but um, so I'm just going to try to reflow some of the solder on these legs and just see what that does. Okay kids, it's uh, probably a week later and what happened was we've decided to go with a broken Nintendo from eBay for parts to fix his Nintendo. So what we'll do is try to fire this up and see what the issue is. Oh, as you can hear, There's some stuff inside, probably just pieces of plastic. At least that's what it sounds like. Um, yeah, so this was purchased broken. Uh, description said it was uh, not turning on with no power. Um, when I opened it up, the packaging, it came with a power supply. Now right away, there's a pretty intense bend in the power supply, like it's been, I don't know, maybe pushed against a wall or something, or... Anywho, I tested voltage from this power supply, and there is none. So, it may be the case that um, this works, and that the power supply is just bad for the Nintendo. So, what I'll do is, uh, we can see what's rattling around in here first. Because if it's anything metal, what we don't want to do is turn this on and have it short out anything, you know, if there's anything shorted in the first place, anything else. So I'm just gonna crack this open and we'll see what that rattling sound is. Yeah, so it was um, this here, little piece of plastic. Oh, two little pieces of plastic. So let's just try um, using my power supply with this beast and see if it works at all. Okay, so that's a good sign. So we have the classic blinking light when there's no game in there. So it does come on, there is power. Now if I throw this game in, and it just works, I am going to have a funny little chuckle, because that would be pretty funny. Now, we still got a blink, but it might just be dirt, so I'll do a little wiggle action. I hear a little glitch. 
Well, kids, it looks like this Nintendo is working. Okay, so um, yeah, check this out. This is the, um, the broken one that we have set up here. This is uh, Chad's original. And all this guy needed was the proper power supply and a little TLC. So there's our monster party going. Just gonna swap it out. We've done our cleaning. And yeah, I've, I'm not putting those games in with any like fuss or trying to be delicate about it. I'm just kind of slapping them in to see if they work. And that's usually a really good sign on like the quality of the connector in there. I mean, if we can just throw games in and have it work. We're in pretty good shape. The colors are right. Um, everything looks fine there. Let me get um. Let me grab the dog bone from my buddy Mark, and we'll try that. Okay, dog bone time. Yep. So dog bone seems to work okay. Yeah. I'm just going to replace the board, put it in his case, and um, for now call it a day because I don't know when Chad will get back to me. So um, yeah, let me do this and uh, we'll wrap it up. There it is. I didn't get in touch with Chad by the time I uh, wanted to finish this video. So hopefully he's going to be happy with, you know, just swapping out the main board of the um, eBay system. It's the most logical move to make. Um, why replace a PPU on a old machine when you can just swap out a board that you already have that works great and just put it in the shell. So here's our monster party game. And this works 99% of the time without any issues. Dragon power. Ah, and there's the one percent of the time it doesn't work. Oh, huh. it would help if I push the game down. That's better. Um, so yeah, it works 99% of the time. The colors are good, the system's fine, it just needed a power supply that worked, and a good cleaning. So there it is. Yeah, so that's the video. Thanks for watching. Um, I'll be doing more stuff like this. Um, like I said in my last video, my little game room tour, I will be doing more and more because I was on Kind of a hiatus from the YouTube stuff. So yeah, again, give me a thumbs up if you like the video. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more content. And um, you know, you can check out my backlog too. And until next time, thanks for watching. Have a good weekend. And we'll see you later. Bye bye.